My son likes to say, Mom, you're the smallest mom I know. <laughs> and the truth is, I have heels on today, but without them, I'm not even five foot. And for the last 13 years, protecting my active, adventurous, fearless, curious son has been a tall but incredible order. But now he's a teenager, and the stakes just got higher. And today, I'm going to tell you why. But first, how many of you have a teenager? How many of you were a teenager? <laughs> we all survived, <laughs> and our parents did their best to protect us. And now, as parents ourselves, we're doing our best to make sure that our teens are staying safe as they are becoming young adults. And we worry a lot. And we have sleepless nights. And we do so much every day. We want them to wear helmets while they're skiing, skateboarding, riding their bikes. We want them to stay healthy. We want them to eat right, get enough sleep, reduce their screen time. We want to know where they are and who they are with. And we put them through safety trainings for earthquakes, for fires, for gunmen at school. And we talk to them about making smart choices about drugs and about alcohol. But unfortunately, sometimes our best is not enough. And despite being vigilant about making sure they stay safe every day, we can't protect them from everything. But what if I told you there is something we can protect them from now for the future? And what if I told you we're not doing it? We're not protecting our teens against cancer. Cancers caused by human papillomavirus, HPV. But in order to prevent these cancers, we have to do something that makes us uncomfortable. We have to talk about something that as adults, we don't want to talk about and we don't want to acknowledge. We have to picture our teens as responsible young adults. We have to look past their teenage years, and we have to picture them as young adults who someday, eventually, will be sexually active. So before I can talk about cancer, I have to talk about sex, <laughs> just for a few seconds. So HPV is a common virus. In fact, it is the most common sexually transmitted infection in the United States. Most of you sitting in this room today have probably had HPV at some point in your life, whether you had one or a hundred partners. Yes, that means you. Let me repeat that, most of you listening today and me. I was diagnosed with HPV when I was 24. I had just finished my graduate degree. I was working in my field. I was living my life, pursuing my dreams, like most 20-somethings do. See, the majority of HPV infections are low risk. They clear on their own. But I wasn't that lucky. Others are high risk. And over years, even decades, cause abnormal cells to develop, that can become cancerous. Most people don't know they're infected, and they don't know with which type. And that's what happened to me. I had no symptoms and a high-risk HPV infection detected by an abnormal pap smear. So at the age 24, my life became a series of biopsies, painful surgery, to remove the abnormal cells from my cervix and more biopsies on and off for more than 15 years. 
mine didn't become cancer because it was caught early, but it was the type that could have. And I might not be standing here today talking to you about being the mom of a teenager. So who can get cancer from HPV? Who can die from HPV-related cancers? Your next door neighbor, my college roommate, a famous Hollywood actor, your sister, your brother, my colleague, your son, your daughter, the person sitting next to you, and you. But we can stop HPV. We have the prevention and the detection tools, but we need to use them. We can ensure that a virus won't stop a generation from pursuing their dreams, from having their ideal career, going to college, finding the love of their life, traveling the world. We can do this because there's a vaccine, specifically a cancer vaccine, one that is proven to be safe and effective. Take a moment to think about that. Imagine the devastation of cancer prevented by a vaccine. Did you know vaccines are one of the top 10 greatest public health achievements in the 20th century? And the HPV vaccine, it is the second vaccine in history to prevent cancer. Would you have thought in our lifetime that we would be here today talking about a cancer vaccine? We protect our babies with a life-saving series of vaccines against diseases like polio and measles, but we are failing our teenagers by not protecting them against still often fatal diseases like meningitis, HPV, and pertussis. Odds are most of you in this room won't vaccinate your teens, and one death from a vaccine-preventable disease is one death too many. Today, the CDC estimates that more than six out of 10 girls and eight out of 10 boys have not completed the HPV vaccination series, leaving them vulnerable to these cancers. And within five years, oral cancers in men are expected to surpass cervical cancers, making it crucial that our sons are vaccinated. Yes, our sons, HPV affects them as much as it does our daughters. You can prevent a generation from suffering from cancer as adults, but why aren't you? Vaccinating our teens is not opening the door to sex. It is closing the door to cancer. And each of us is key to closing that door and stopping HPV. Collectively, we can make history. The HPV vaccine was approved 10 years after my diagnosis. I didn't have the opportunity to be vaccinated. My mom says if it had been available, she would have made sure I was, especially knowing the pain it could have prevented. And now, as a mom myself, I do have the opportunity, and my son is fully vaccinated. And it was as simple as one, two, three. I was the key for him to prevent cancer and to stop HPV. So whether you are a parent, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, a brother, a friend, or a grandparent, you are the key. Thank you.